Monica Rambeau is one of the breakout stars of WandaVision, and she's quickly become a fan favorite in the MCU. Monica's also held quite a few names in comics. Captain Marvel, Photon, Pulsar, Spectrum, the Avenger formerly known as Mouse Cop. With the recent transformation that took place in the show, a lot of people might have a lot of questions about her powers, abilities, and comic book history. Well, too bad. I don't have time to do this for every single comic book character, so today we're going to talk about Venom instead. Eddie Brock was a report- no, I'm kidding. I, I read a bunch of Monica Rambeau comics this weekend, so let's discuss her. Monica Rambeau's first comic book appearance was The Amazing Spider-Man Annual 16, where she was kind of stalked by Spider-Man for being a baddie. Literally. Spider-Man spots Monica coming off of a bus, and for some reason his spider sense starts going off, so he follows her. Spider-Man's concerned that because she's attractive, she's gonna get mugged in the Big Apple. And like clockwork, Monica is attacked by two muggers, but before Spider-Man can spring into action, Monica already has kicked crap out of them. Spider-Man goes in to ask her about the assault, and she instinctively uses her powers to send him flying into a dumpster. Monica then hightails it out of there. We next see Monica in her superhero uniform high above the city emitting a tremendous amount of light, enough to light up most of Manhattan. She goes into a flashback showing how she actually obtained her superpowers. Monica was a cop in New Orleans, but felt shackled down by a police force that refused to promote her despite her exceptional police work. After storming out of her captain's office, she was confronted by a mysterious man named Professor Andre Leclerc. The professor explains that he worked with Monica's grandfather in the field of advanced physics, working on processes for drawing energies from other dimensions and universes. However, in desperation, he turned to a man named General Ernesto Ramirez to fund his work and quickly turned the project into plans to make advanced weapons of mass destruction. The professor quit, but was replaced by Leclerc's own protege, who was actively working on completing his life's work, and feared the general would obtain weapons that threaten the world. He asked for Monica's help to convince the authorities to step in and shut down the operation before something awful happened. For some reason, rather than doing that, Monica and the professor traveled to the secret research base on an oil rig instead, in an effort to kind of like check it out. Monica, looking bad as hell, uses her power of simps to gain access to the rig and score a personal tour. Literally, she just shows up in a bikini and the villains are like, well, she's hot, so let's bring her on board, surely this isn't a ruse. The professor also boards the rig and he's immediately caught, because why wouldn't he be, he's like 900 years old. This alerts the whole rig and just like that, the jig is up. In the resulting chaos, Monica does what any sane person would do when confronted with a device capable of channeling interdimensional energy. She punches the crap out of it. Her dragon uppercut sets off a chain reaction, causing an explosion. Monica is transformed into a being of pure light and is teleported back to shore. She phases into a storage warehouse and slaps together a dope costume from random clothing around the place. Monica flies back to the oil rig, incapacitates a bunch of guards with her new powers, and is just in time to watch the professor get shot, although not fatally. Monica notices that the reactor has created a dimensional tear, and she uses her new abilities to absorb the excess energy and prevent the destruction of the rig. Monica has saved all of the oil rig workers' lives, and one of them calls out Capitan Est Marvala, believing that Monica was a captain after mishearing the professor call her Mon Capitan. The media gets word of the events from the oil rig and starts beginning to call Monica Captain Marvel. Keep in mind the actual Captain Marvel at this point in comics was a Kree warrior who had recently died. Monica has no affiliation with the actual title of Captain Marvel as most people know it. The professor creates a suit for her out of unstable molecules and explains her powers as the ability to change her body into any form of electromagnetic energy, electricity, light, radio waves, or even x-rays. It's all at her full command. There's only one minor issue. The energy that Monica absorbed on the rig is building up inside of her, and if she doesn't find a way to stop it, it's going to explode with the force of a thousand megaton bombs. Monica attempts to get help from the Fantastic Four, but Reed Richards is nowhere to be found. Ben Grimm, The Thing, recommends she try to get help from the Avengers, and she instantly transports through the computer to Avengers Mansion, accidentally knocking out Iron Man in the process. The combined efforts of Spider-Man and Iron Man are able to siphon off the remaining power and save Monica and the city. The remaining Avengers show up and are fairly impressed with her powers and decide to make her a member in training, despite the fact that she almost killed them all, which is like the definition of failing upwards. 
Monica joins the Avengers and quickly becomes a key member over the next few months. However, after a brutal attack on Avengers Mansion by the Masters of Evil, the current Avengers chairperson and leader, the Wasp, decides to step down. The vacancy in leadership presents an opportunity, and Captain America himself nominates Monica to lead. After mulling the decision over and assisting Captain America in a rescue mission, Monica decides to accept the nomination and becomes the leader of the Avengers. She acts as Avengers leader for a period of months, commanding the team in a battle against the X-Men and even taking down the Super Adaptoid. However, tragedy strikes when the Avengers and Neymar are forced to take down the Submariner's wife, Marina, who has transformed into a massive beast known as the Leviathan. In a last-ditch attempt to stop the Leviathan, Monica and Thor decide to combine powers and electrocute the beast. The resulting blast disintegrates Monica and spreads her out across the surface of the ocean. She doesn't emerge until days later, emaciated and weak and with no powers, so she steps down as the Avengers leader. Now, that is a lot of history for her as Captain Marvel, but I wanted to jump forward a bit in time because this video can't cover everything that she's ever done or it'll be longer than an actual episode of WandaVision. Get it? Because the show's short. Bazing. Okay, quick side story time. As I said at the very beginning of the video, Monica has a number of superhero names over the years. So far, we've only ever covered her acting under the name of Captain Marvel, and she kind of stumbled into that name. The original Captain Marvel in the comics was a man named Marvell, a Kree warrior who died in the comics of lung cancer. Why is that important? Because superhero names are cool and mantles are important. During the events of a comic called Avengers Unplugged, Monica has a control disc implanted into her brain by an Avengers villain named The Controller. He sends her to hunt down and kill the son of the original Captain Marvel, Janus Vale. The two battle, and with the help of the Avengers Deathcry and Vision, they are able to uncover that Monica is being controlled and remove the disc. Janus is extremely impressed with Monica, and he gives her his blessing to continue using that name, but instead she decides to relinquish it to him, instead calling herself Photon. Monica uses this name for a while, like a decade, until literally the unthinkable happens, and this part is hilarious. Janus Vale comes back to Earth, and he joins a new assembly of the Thunderbolts, and he's kind of sporting new powers. And instead of using the Captain Marvel name, which is what Monica gave it to him for, he's going by the name Photon. Monica confronts him about it, and she's like, you stole my name again. And Janus laughs it off as a coincidence, and she's like, what are you talking about? It's not a coincidence. You were with me when I thought it up. The two spend some time discussing it at a bar and thinking of new names for Janus to use when he blurts out the name Pulsar. Monica instead jumps on the name and decides to use that name for, like, the next decade. And there are a ton of adventures for Monica in this time period, and she shows some absolutely awesome abilities and grows into a tremendous hero in her own right. But I'm going to jump forward again to her latest codename and her modern appearances because, honestly, these later appearances are super cool. During the events of the massive crossover event, Infinity, Thanos once again attempts to invade and conquer Earth. The majority of the Avengers were out in space, dealing with a new threat known as the Builders. During this time, Monica joins a group of Avengers in NYC under the leadership of Luke Cage, known as the Mighty Avengers. Rather unceremoniously, she again changes her name to Spectrum, which personally, I think, aligns with her powers much better than any of the names she had used before. After all, she can interact with and affect any form of light or radiation across multiple spectrums. During an invasion by Thanos, Monica is attacked by Proxima Midnight, whose spear causes an infection of anti-photons in Monica's body, which could have potentially killed her. Also during this time period, Ebony Maw, through mind manipulation, causes Doctor Strange to summon the insanely powerful eldritch monster Shumagorath to New York. Blue Marvel arrives, joins the team, and burns the infection out by infusing Monica with additional photons. Together the team is able to defeat Shumagorath, and Monica deals the killing blow, which is no small feat. Monica ends up serving as field commander in this new team of Mighty Avengers and enters into a romance with Blue Marvel. Together, the two deduce that Monica's powers are growing, and she's becoming essentially an immortal being of light, one that may end up outliving time and space itself. The mighty Avengers disassemble following the events of Secret Wars and after the creation of the new Marvel Prime Universe. Monica and Blue Marvel both join a new team called the Ultimates. During this time, Monica is once again reverted back to her normal form. 
And honestly, there is a lot to cover of Monica in modern day, so much so that it could be its own video. And if this video does well and enough people recommend it or ask for it, I could definitely see myself making that video. It would be a blast. However, if I don't get around to making it, literally check out anything that Al Ewing has written recently. Mighty Avengers, Captain America and the Mighty Avengers, Ultimates, Avengers No Surrender, all of them are awesome stories that include Spectrum as a driving force. But that is it for this video on Monica Rambeau, aka Captain Marvel, aka Photon, aka Pulsar, aka Spectrum. I really hope that you learned a lot, and if you did, consider liking and subscribing. Thanks again for watching. This has been Nick with Key Issues, and remember the motto, Monica over everything.